So this building here on the right was where I used to bartend. We'll get a better view of when I park. So this is the street of where I used to do my bartending gig. The bartending place is just further down past this gas station. It's kind of weird coming back here after remembering my experiences here and how inexperienced I was before going to bartending school. This right here on the sign that says Mount Vernon was the bar I was working at for three weeks before they let me go for not being able to catch up as it was too fast paced. This feels like nostalgia being back here. Eight months ago when I was here, that soda machine wasn't there. All the stuff on the wall wasn't there except for a few. The coffee machine wasn't there. The shelf behind it wasn't there as it was all over here. Coming back here is definitely a strange place to be compared to how inexperienced I was before going to bartending school. It's great that I'm still welcome here and everybody still knows my name. Half the people are still here, so it feels like I'm reliving my experience here. After having quick chit chats with my old co-workers, everyone is quite impressed with how much I've learned and what I know now and that I'm still going forward. Makes me feel a little better. These shades broke on one side, but they still work. But anyway, they have that experience in my job. I'm, everyone still remembers me. Everyone's happy to see me. Everyone still knows my name. I'm welcome back anytime. Uh, I'm sure I'm welcome to work back there. My biggest fear in Miami was going back there because of the lack of experience and knowledge I had compared to what I know now. After facing that fear, I'm not really scared anymore, and now I can relax. But after going to bartending school, I didn't know one tenth of what I know now. I feel kind of left out that everybody has bikinis and shirtless, and I am white as a ghost and hairy and unattractive, so I'm gonna keep my shirt on for now. But I'm gonna keep the shades on so I can stare at the girls. No matter where I go on the beach, I'm always wearing shorts and sandals. One of the reasons why is because you can step on shelves. It's so clear. The bright side can reflect it, but when you're walking forward, not looking at it, you can step on it and not realize it. During the slow season of summer, when they would send me home about six hours earlier, my first hour on the ship, this was where I would take walks because I paid to park for the whole day. Why not go to the beach? This is where I would be. This would be called North Shore Ocean Front. It's about two miles north of South Beach. South Beach and North Shore are two different places. South Beach is more of a tourist destination where it's all chaotic and party, party, party. Up here, it's actually pretty chill with most of the locals, which means there's more parking and it's not as chaotic with all these, what I could say, annoying tourists. This is where I would take walks around. Over here you gotta be careful because people like to ride their bikes around. If you look back here, you see the buildings in the back and it kinda feels like you're in Vice City, like on the outside area towards the uh, South Beach. It's pretty cool. Remember over here in the summertime it would be hotter than hell. Like after an hour and a half of walking here, I'd already get a sunburn. There was a time I was waiting for my paycheck on a Friday. As I was sent home early, um, I told the manager, hey, what am I going to do? I paid to park for the whole day. She said, um, go to the beach. I was like, oh, yeah. And then she just looks at me like, like that. <laughs> and then after coming back, I'm, I'm back with the all body sunburn. She was like, I can tell you enjoyed the beach. Here's your paycheck. <laughs> Another awesome thing about Miami Beach is you can walk around with your shirt off or shit, even your underwear and sandals and nobody will judge you. Trust me, there's going to be people here that are going to make me look like an athlete compared to them. So I feel a little better. And I could use a tan, I'm white as a ghost. I don't know 
know if anyone remembers the video of the day I got fired from Instacart, but this is the area I was walking at when recording the video. At nighttime here, this is when it comes to life. All the colors change and there's lots to see, especially with the exotic buildings like this one here. This is where it was located. Further down about, I think about a 10 minute drive is where the building collapsed, which was the same day. What a coincidence. I remember last year when I was here, all of Ocean Drive, which is this road, was closed. And it was for the outside people to eat and drink. This was during COVID pandemic, and for some reason they closed the entire drive, but now it looks like it's open and ready for parking. I don't know what this building here is, but people would get their picture taken in front of it all the time. Those seagulls flying around. I am also here on spring break, as you can see behind me. It is insanely crowded here. I remember in the summertime, this beach was nearly empty. One of the cool things about Miami Beach is that you got all kinds of races and genders and people around the world. And sometimes the fact that there's all kinds of different people is what makes it fun. Because there's all kinds of different cultures that you can learn from. Right over here on this street in general, I don't know exactly where, but this was where I used to play guitar on the streets at night when I lost my bartending job and was doing what I could to make money. But the first few times I did it, it was great, maybe making $50 or $60, never above $100. Uh, unfortunately, the North and the South are two different places, so my music and style isn't any interest to the people over here. Most of the people like that modern music. I remember when I played farther down, I had a couple of girls flash their tits at me. And then the day after playing again, that was when police officers came over and told me that this was city property and that I wasn't allowed to play here. But however, there were people playing saxophones and guitars with music playing in the background, but they kicked me out. Some say it was because the wealthy people sent police officers to kick me out, or they were just doing that for my protection because I did look up that this isn't exactly the safest place to be at night by yourself. And with music and instruments in the nighttime, well, I think you're asking to get shot. So I think those police officers were probably just doing that to protect me. I don't really know. Either way, I wasn't really making money, so. If anyone has watched Scarface, this is where the chainsaw scene began and that was the stairs. <laughs> Ten years ago, this was a Jimmy Rockets Burger Shack. Before that was some other businesses, but this used to be apartment buildings until I think 1988 when I think some movie director company or something bought it out and then the city bought it out, just became businesses and so on and so forth, but they did keep the stairs, but unfortunately nobody's allowed to walk through them. I think they should have created like a Scarface museum and kept all the apartments. That would have been pretty cool. So I just checked out of the hotel, and now I'm going to be driving towards the apartment that I lived at, and the whole area that I was doing DoorDash mostly and just the residential areas, that was where I was at most of the time. It's gonna be about a 20 minute drive because of the traffic. When people say that driving in Miami totally sucks, it's worse than people say it is. The city of Miami is so well developed. Everything is walkable, it's dense. All the roads are easy to know. The directions are easy. And the sightseeing is kind of fun with all the various palm trees also. Like this is the suburban area and it's really easy to get around. You just take this street, then you take a left, and then you turn right, then there's the apartment and all the things in between. The 
this road is Nostalgia. This is where I did a lot of DoorDash orders, and this is one of the main roads towards the suburban areas of where I lived. So driving here brings back lots of memories. I remember we were driving through this road on the way to the apartment. This area will remind you of scenes of Dexter because of the way the pine trees look and all that stuff. This is the road I would take on the way back every day to my apartment. The building that you see on the far back was where I used to deliver all the time. And right over here on the left here is where the way to the apartment. And then the buildings over there is also the college areas. I honestly don't need the GPS at this point. But it hasn't been a while since I've been here, so I'm, I'm not 100%. This would be the road I would take to get to the apartment as it's right down the light to the right. But like, look, all of these houses are so well dense in walkable areas, kind of like how it is in Southern California, like San Diego. But overall, just beautiful development. The house right here on the left where the minivan is or next to it was where I found that futon. A little over the light right here to the right, a quarter of a mile was where the apartment was. And I remember when getting that trip on, I had to walk all the way over here with my dolly and pull it all the way back to the apartment, even up and down bumpy sidewalks and having to go through speed bumps and upstairs just to bring it up to my apartment in the middle of July too. To show an example, this was it. This was the road where I had to walk that dolly with the futon all the way over to the apartment. You can see how long it is. And the sidewalks were a little crooked and then you had to cross through here. And then there'd be cars parked right there. And then I had to go around on the road. And right where you see the flashing crosswalk sign, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. That's about as far as to where I had to go. Right here on the right. This is the apartment that I lived in. Now, I do not live here anymore, so I am not gonna go in there. Said I'm gonna go get some lunch. When I was last here, all of this was a lighter or darker yellow. That Ferris wheel behind the building wasn't here. All of this was an entirely different color. I don't know if they do this yearly, but all of this was under construction. Right over here is the grocery store right behind my apartment. Literally behind the building is the apartment and I would walk here in probably like a minute or two or you could hop the fence and get there in 30 seconds. This is where I go to get my groceries and refill my gallon jug. And what's sad about that is there is the same homeless people that were here when I lived here when I went to refill my water in the morning. It's really sad to see that. And then right on the corner here is a great Peruvian restaurant and then there's a couple of Asian restaurants around it and there's the five guys where I would do DoorDash orders right behind the great buildings on the concrete there's other businesses I used to have fun walking up and down all the stairs and then there was a gyro place a little overweight in the back I don't know if it's still there I'm not able to see it from here maybe I'll go check it out in a minute and then here's the gas station and then there was that area where I got the poke bowl and had the yellow Spanish colors this is the Little Caesars where I used to pick up orders from DoorDash all the time. I could see they finally put all the seatings back. All of the tables and seats will be blocked off and even the bathroom will be blocked off. But now there's an employee's only sign. Probably because homeless people go in there use the bathroom. But you would use the bathroom there's the grocery store down there. So there's no sense. This is the Subrages place right next door. And the Help Wanted sign is still there. Don't let it fool you because when I ask these people if I can help them twice, I never got a call. That's the sound of Miami. This is not exactly a safe area because as you can see all the houses around it have bars on the windows, bars on the front porch. Some of the houses here even have bars on the garage and a gate surrounding the entire property. Here we are. This is where my apartment was in Miami. 
Now I am not gonna go in the property because I do not live there anymore and it is considered trespassing. Right here is a better view of where the five guys in the Peruvian restaurant and all the other businesses I was talking about are. Those are the five guys where I would get DoorDash. And as soon as one of these people start moving at a four-way stop sign, I can get up further. All right, come on. All right, where you see that done logo, right next to it was the Peruvian restaurant. The one in the cursive. For the most part, all these buildings are still here, but all of this is redesigned. It was the same color, except it was probably older. That might have been why I didn't notice it at first. Um, most part, everything is still here. Um, there was the Billard Sports Bar that I tried asking for a bartending job, and the guy there was a douchebag and was like cussing me out, saying no in an aggressive way, and I almost had a fight with him. Uh, the neighbor I met down there said, yeah, that's how he is when you know, meet him at first, but once you get to know him, he's real cool. Oh, man, that gyro place I was talking about is, is gone. It was right here by the nails. Oh, be darn, it's... Maybe they moved. Because it was right here where the area is. Huh. It's a shame. Because the owner was really nice. Right here is the Florida International University, mostly known as FIU. This was right next to my apartment. And it was hard for me to get a job here when I lost both Instacart and the bartending place. It's because all the college kids during off course would come and look for a job and they would take everything that's available here as I tried the Publix because I thought it's right next door and I won't have to pay gas to go to work or have to drive and I could just walk in two minutes but it's tough competition in this general area mainly because of the college students and I was rejected at every other Publix I would try on an interview uh, according to people they said it was because I had desperation in my eyes and attitude because when the position was taken I told them I'll take anything with that look of desperation either that or I was just overqualified Right behind the right lane must turn right sign is a Cuban restaurant. I would go there to pick up food from DoorDash and deliver at night shifts between 1 to 2 a.m. I would make $60 in an hour and a half just picking up food there. When I was wanting to try out their food because they had Cuban sandwiches and other dishes, for some reason they started closing the entry and the only thing open was the bar shelf outside and even then they started closing that so I don't know if they changed their hours because I don't see the 24 hours sign anymore. The cool thing about the Miami suburbs is when you want to go around a circle it was the same with Poway of San Diego. You could just turn right on a neighborhood and then take a left and another left at a stoplight and make a U-turn. Uh, most of the suburbs in Miami and San Diego don't really have those maze-like structures like other cities do. So you can just turn here and then turn back to stoplight. But as you can see, look at all these homes. Like, they're all dense. And this is one of the only neighborhoods where there's no bars on the windows or garages or anything. You can see a lot of classic cars here, too. building right here was where I got my parking ticket when delivering food for about five minutes but I had a nice view. This building right over here had a little mini Asian store and that's where I would get some of my Asian products but it wasn't quite like the Asian products I would get in San Diego or at Jungle Gyms in Cincinnati couple of restaurants and other areas around here too. Right here is where all the houses are right before you reach the Everglades. I think about half a mile is right where the Miami City area ends and it's just the Everglades and the swamps after that. We'll get to it in a moment. Right here is the beginning of the Everglades. 
where it's all swamps and trees. When I was first here, there would be houses, but then behind the fence would just be the end point of just trees and swamps, which I found out now is Everglades. And it is protected by the state because of its environment. It is also why Miami gets hot and humid in the summer. And this road will also take you to Naples if you go at the very end. Miami is also one of the only areas that has a Kmart, but there is a sign in the parking lot. I don't know if you can see it, but it says the store is closing. I'm not really looking at it. I'm paying attention to the road. Right here at the Wells Fargo sign in the yellow building with the CVS on it was where these people were selling Cuban flags and shirts during the Cuban protests and riots for their freedom. Uh, it looks like they aren't here anymore. But when I bought the flag, I think somebody tore it up because when I was in Fort Lauderdale, I noticed my flag was tearing bit by bit and eventually a third of it was 